Welcome to... All right, I'm finishing up my warband. Um, the final touch that I wanted to show you is uh, the lightsabers, because this is my Padawan. Um, he has two lightsabers, so what I've done is I'm using toothpicks, like this guy. This is my alpha, so he also has a saber. So what I've done is I have taken these toothpicks, I've used my very minis oriented um, dog toenail clipper that I have for my little dachshund. Um, and I just use those to clip the tips off here and then I glued them on. So like I said, this is what I, I did it with my alpha already and it seemed to work all right. But yeah, so I'm finishing up and then as soon as I'm done with this, I will show you my whole warband. Hey, it's Ashley. Um, my warband is completely done. So I would like to share with you what I've done. This is my first warband, so it's very exciting. Um, here's what we got. So this guy is my alpha. He is the Knight of the Path because I've built a um, the Path Space Dwarf warband. So this is my alpha. It's on his rock. He's got the bigger base um, and a lightsaber which I showed you earlier, but this is him. He's pointing the way. You know he's the alpha because he's, you know, on a rock or whatever. And then over here we have a Padawan. This is my Padawan. Um, these lightsabers were a bitch to glue on, by the way, especially here because they were in two different directions. So this guy sucked, but he's done now, um, unless the lightsabers fall off, which is entirely possible. But this is my Padawan. He's got his dual power sabers. And uh, they've all got the, the purple sashes you can see here. Um, that's their color because, you know, royalty, but also purple is just my favorite color. So that's that guy. Um, another thing he has is an ancient familiar. So he's got the dual sabers and he's also got an ancient familiar, which is basically a force ghost. So, uh, this is him. He was, he was the easiest one because I just did blue with a wash over it. Um, because that's pretty much what the force ghosts are. He's got his drinking horn straight up out of, straight out of Valhalla. And he's got his sword to protect them and whatnot. So this guy's going to be tied to the Padawan. So they're going to be together. And then over here, we've got our disciples. So our disciples have the purple sash, but they also have the purple hats. And they have their training stick and or a training rod and a blaster. So he's got his training rod and a blaster, which this is this was fun um, altering these because these were uh, axes. And so I just cut the axe head off and then painted it brown like wood. And it's his training rod. So... This is one of the disciples. They're more or less the same. I um, kind of changed the configuration up a little bit on like how they were holding the gun and stuff. But And this dude's eyes. I tried to do a little bit of darkness in the eyes, and he looks like, uh, you know, from Doctor Strange, um, Mads Mikkelsen, where he's got the dark eyes. So whatever. He doesn't sleep much because he's a disciple of the path. He has more important things to do. So he's got dark rings everywhere. So yeah, it's one of the disciples, and then my last disciple here, same thing. They've all got their training rods and their guns, their blasters. So what I decided to do, because the primer on these was white, um, what I decided to do with the beards is I just gave them a wash. Instead of trying to make them a different color, I just washed the beards and the hair, um, because I, that's how I, I'm like, they have focus. Okay, they have, you know... Um, white hair ish. So either way, I was like, that's good. And then I also didn't have to do the thing. Um, but I realized when they started to dry that they match kind of the linen shirts that they're all wearing under their armor. So that's not the best, but whatever things you learn. And then this, this guy I was really excited about. He is the hired gun. So he has a rocket launcher which is pretty exciting. Um, his side weapon, he's got dual blaster pistols, which are not on him, but they're there. Um, and he has a different colored sash because he's a hired gun. So he's the Merc. He's got his red sash instead of the purple. Um, the rest of the armor's more or less the same. 
But, and he also does not have a beard because, you know, in the path, that's their thing is they have to have the beards. That's part of being on the path in my backstory anyway. Um, but this guy, he's got the, you know, wicked looking Hulk Hogan stash because he's not a member of the path. He's a hired gun. So, yep. So that is my war band, my first ever war band, all done. And I can't wait to, uh, actually play with them should be pretty exciting what up cultists is your boy Vernon carrion just uh sitting here doing some late night painting getting these uh war games atlantic star rage challenge models done um they're not really quite where i wanted them uh my whole idea was to make these like grim dark and to go over them with like some airbrush and uh you know do some of that subtractive painting and uh, I didn't get to it but what I did do is some color blocking using pro acrylics. the next step is to get those um, you know enamels or whatever on there and to sort the washes and to uh, then do that kind of subtractive stuff but that's just kind of like beyond where I'm at right now in terms of skill set so let's take a look at the color blocking that I did with the pro acryl and uh, we'll see what you think so here is my force. The um, drones aren't represented here. They're kind of, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what to do with them. They're blocked out in this uh, dark, warm gray. You can see this here is from Pro Krill. And uh, with the sort of subtractive style of painting where you want to like, my understanding is, is you want to get like a really nice blocking in here. So I got some blocking in. The primary layers were done with um, an airbrush. And then uh, I went in over and just got them really kind of like saturated, right? So uh, in, for particular, in particular for the uh, War Games Atlantic dudes, you can kind of see here um, how they kind of come out. This is uh, charcoal gray, or charcoal black rather, for the black. Uh, this is the uh, Pro Acryl, just, it's just called green. Uh, this is called golden brown up here on his collar. And his, uh, the brown kind of like leather and pants are um, mahogany. And the uh, ground is dark umber. And then the white is uh, bright ivory. This is not even the brightest white that Pro Acryl does. This is, uh, which is their uh, bold titanium. So it's like one step down from that. Uh, and so you can kind of see how the squad came out here. I think they're actually looking pretty tight. Um, even without the uh, kind of grim dark weathering on them. You know, I'll show you some of the stuff that I have because I can never remember the, what this stuff's called. Uh, I got some of this. It's an ammo wash from uh, MIG because I don't buy uh, AK because uh, they're fascists. Um, and uh, here we have the squad. I think they look pretty good. I mean, they're not. I mean, like, this is not usually like the level I paint at for my Warhammer, but uh, you know what, man? Like, they're like good to go. They're like ready to play with. Um, <laughs> The, this is Jade over here on the power weapon. Uh, I, it reads to me a little bit more like turquoise than Jade, but I fucking love it. Uh, I think it comes out really great. I think it gives the model a lot of life. And um, I just, God, I just love the Pro Curl stuff. Uh, the golden brown lining, when, when, I, the, when I first put this down, I was using um, the... Uh, the red, Pro Curl red, and then just the um, bright ivory, and this dude looked like Santa Claus, and this looked like Mrs. Claus in a mech, and so I was like, fuck that. So I put the um, uh, brown, the, what's it called? The golden brown on here? <laughs> now it looks like McDonald's. Uh, and then the red, this is uh, um, Word Bearer's Red from Citadel. Uh, but the jade is jade from Pro Crow. So, uh, yeah, this army is uh, pretty much ready for the table. And uh, I'm really stoked to get some games against Richard and Adam and Ashley. Very excited. 
this has been a lot of fun, I gotta say. And uh, I really like the way that the army reads. Uh, I think it's gonna look real good. I think it's gonna look good now with the kind of three foot rule, and I think it's gonna look even better once I get the uh, animal washes on it. All right, cool. Thanks for following along. We got one more video coming up where we fight. Peace. Hey, it's Adam. We're back talking about Starbreach. This time we are painting. Here is the current state of the warband. We've got our scout sniper here. He's blocked in with his armor colors and gun colors. We've got our commander here. He's at his flesh blocked in armor colors, gun colors. Same thing with our chaplain. If we can get his mask, it's got a bone color, silver on the sword. Armor colors done. Same with the rest of them. Uh, my mech didn't end up arriving. Got a coupon from a friendly local game store, so I bought this um, Imperial Guard Sentinel for 31 with the coupon, so I'm still under the $70 even with that. Um, primed everything in a gray, like a darkish kind of gray. These are the weapon options. Um, then what I did is I took a uh, ash gray and I did, um, well, first what I did was I took a wash, a black wash and went over all of the dark gray primer, which is this color here on these smokestacks and hit all that with a black wash into the recesses uh, kind of all over to give some depth. And then I used that um, ash gray to do what's called overbrushing. And I took a flat, like kind of like this one, um, a flat brush, dipped it in, uh, wiped the majority of it off, but left on a lot more than if I was just dry brushing and then just kind of started to come down these guys like this. Uh, it'll, it'll give you kind of a chalky texture on the paint, which we might be able to see if I can find a spot on one of these guys that I didn't go back over and touch up. But you'll get kind of like a, like back here on the back of his legs. You'll get kind of this chalky texture on the paint doing that. But it gives you an idea of where you need to go back in and lay the color down to get kind of these more uh, defined armor panels. And then since you're overbrushing, it's not getting into the recesses. So it gives you some nice definition. It's a quick technique. I mean, these aren't going to win any any painting contest. Oh, I broke him. Darn, I'll have to re-glue him. Uh, these aren't going to win any painting competitions, but if you need something that's fast and relatively easy, uh, that is a good way to go about it. Uh, you get pretty smooth coats out of it, provided you thin it enough and apply it in the right way. And, you know, like I said, you'll end up with these areas like in here where I need to go back in and touch it up to get it a little better. But that's kind of the state of where things are at right now. I got another week. I'll probably go back and give these things a dry brush with the lighter color, maybe like an ivory or something to kind of just pick the edges out to highlight them. I'm not gonna worry about multiple dry brushes or varying the shades, cause like I said, this is get them to the table quick kind of paint style. Um, finish detailing in the metals, the color on the wires, uh, this guy's face, which is kind of monochrome right now. I need to hit that with the shade and a couple of different things, probably some agrax on a couple, uh, like a brown wash on a couple things. Uh, I did try to highlight up the guns, but you can't really see it. So I'm gonna have to go back in and redo those probably. But that's where we're at right now. Things are looking pretty cool. Um, uh, yeah, he's still broken. Uh, you know, the sword's looking pretty good. It's nice and shiny. It's got some little lines to find on it. So all that stuff's coming together. So hopefully in a little bit, I will have a playable force with a little, you know, maybe some little lines or gags for some urban camo on them. Um, and then I'll be able to get them on the table. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're back with the Starbreach Warband. I have mostly finished up my Legion of Mankind here. Um, I have my mech over here. I went with an urban camo scheme on these, and so we've got kind of these little patterns, and then with this, I wanted the legs to look a little dirty, so I Hit them with a brown wash a couple times just to build up a layer of grime on those. When I put this together, I'm not sure how to position it yet. Probably have some kind of stocking forward kind of look like this or that. Apologies for the sorry state of my fingernails here. Um, 
the weapons are here. Um, there's a lot of weapon options with this. I kind of don't want to glue anything into place yet. I figure I'll poster tack it or magnetize it to give me some options so I can swap in and out. Um, I've got my troops with the urban camo kind of pattern. I'm not super happy with how it turned out. They look a little too much like Chick-fil-A cows to me. And once I got that thought in my head, I couldn't dislodge it. And so now I kind of hate them. Uh, they're not terrible. They're not what I would consider great. I'm not really sure what I could do to redeem them other than strip them down and start over again. Um, but they're playable, so that's what counts. The last couple things I need to do is clean up these bases and get a nice little black rim on them. Uh, do the road markings on these. These I used a technical paint called Astro Granite to lay down a texture and then I washed over them with a black wash to give them kind of a road feel. And then this guy, I did some flesh coloration on his face so he looks vaguely human. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of, um, yeah, I still got to glue this guy. He, I broke him off his base and then I didn't glue him because I figured it'd make it easier to put the texture on, but he keeps falling over everywhere. That's my cat, if you can hear that in the background. She's deaf, so she's very loud. But yeah, I've got some weapon options for the mech. I've got this little chainsaw blade that hooks under the bottom of this piece here, right here. On that little nub. And then I've got a laser with the pack. And then this little pack over here that fits on the side. And then all of my troops, my chaplain, my sergeant, who's my alpha, my heavy machine gunner, my scout sniper, the troop with the submachine gun, and the two troops with the bolt rifle. So they're pretty much ready to go. And that's all I got. Hey, it's Richie Buzzkill here. Week two, uh, Star, Star Breach Challenge. Uh, we got some painting done. Uh, we still have some painting to go. Uh, these are my nomadic... Uh, Raiders, they are lizard men from War Games Atlantic. Let's take a closer look here. I have one that is a little, little further along here, kind of uh, where where these guys are going. Let me see if I can focus here. Uh, he's got a uh, going to go with those kind of eyes. I got kind of I'm going with a camo scheme for the guns because I was like, I'm not really good. I'm doing all these like subtle like kind of earthy colors and then I'm going to paint big silver guns. I'm like, and eh, that's that, that is another different, entirely different universe of, uh, of possibility. So kind of went with a diverse, uh, color skin, uh, skin color, trying to stay in that autumn tones. But, uh, um, you know, they, these guys are just, I want them to look a little ragtag. So I'm painting some different, uh, colors for the leather straps and the skin tone, uh, but they found like a box of, uh, I feel like everybody got their respirators at the same place, but, uh, the guns will all be that I'm going to try and go with, uh, move these guys out of the way. These are the, just the regular troops here. And then, um, I'm probably going to try and, uh, paint the, uh, the plasma sabers with, uh, turbo dork, uh, paint of some color shifting variety and maybe put some white on there or whatever. Um, so you can see these are this kind of the state of the rest of these. I did a Zenithal highlight. I don't know how well you can really see it. Tried to, it sort of worked and it sort of didn't. Eh, whatever. And then, uh, then basically that's kind of where all my soldiers are at. And then I pretty much finished with my tank, my mech here. So you can see that I went with like an autumn camo scheme. I put kind of a war of the world. It's a, it's the color shifting paint. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. It sort of does it, but it's not really the effect I wanted, but it looks kind of like a war of the world's uh, eyeball thing. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty sweet. So 
I, uh, I, I'm, I feel uh, he, this one's pretty done. I didn't attach the weapons. The weapons are interchangeable, right? Because we got this whole raft of options here, including my chainsaw arm thing. Um, you know, I painted the, uh, oop, there we go. So I put a little, put a couple of little uh, tufts on the base. So, so there's some grass coming out of the concrete. I'm mean, planning on do that for the rest of them. Um, but that's pretty much about it for now. I really, this is, this is done. He, he's done. I just got to like paint some guns. And I think I'm going to try oil washes for the first time. Cause, um, you know, an army uh, or a, a force as small as this doing some experimentation is not a huge deal. And I feel like, cause I'm doing, um, I'm also doing another force for another game, but it's much larger. So you kind of have to set down like, this is what I'm doing. And then you kind of work that uh, problem, but really enjoying these uh, colors and kind of uh, hoping to uh, see some of your progress too. Later. Hey, it's Richie Buzzkill. I finished my Star Breach uh, Nomadic Raiders Lizard Men. So let's uh, kind of super cross here. These the front line here is my crew. Um, kind of decided that uh, they would be have uh, very much a camouflage uh, um, motif here. So. I also went to the extent of, let me see here if I can show you the, this, uh, so you can see it looks like it's shiny, but in actuality it is resin, UV resin from my 3D printer poured into the eye sockets and it kind of acts like a little lens. So that's kind of fun right okay and then then we go back here to the uh, specialist I'll just sweep these aside so but so we got the so I told you in the last video there'd be something special about the lizard wizard that is a real ruby in his hand now, you might say, Mr. Buzzkill, it doesn't that rubies are expensive? Ah, but you'd be wrong. Because on eBay, lab grown rubies are dollars a piece. So that was probably about a dollar ruby. So uh but he's fun. He's got red eyes and to match his it kind of gave him some a bunch of red to kind of go with the gem. And then here's my uh, captain here and his first mate they both have pl their plasma sabers and originally I, I put turbo dork uh, spicy meatball on there and it looked kind of like nerf bats so I added this kind of energy effect thing that I tried and it it's okay it's okay it's not my favorite but uh, my favorite on this guy is his uh, his weapon, right? It's pretty cool, pretty fun, right? And then finally, I think I might have had this last video, but it's uh, my tank is finished. You can even see maybe see that the color shift on the eye works, which I didn't expect to actually work. So that is my Starbreach collection.